Hello friends, my name is Madinez and this is part four of my bookshelf tour slash unhaul. As always happens with my content, I have like a plan in my mind and then life is like, haha, you thought. I mean, it's fine. I've been putting up these videos, I guess, sort of regularly, but in my head, I had a timeline that I wanted to meet in terms of when I should be through doing all of this or at least filming it so that when my new cases got here, I would be ready to make the transition. But as I've been talking about, I started a new job. It's just taking a lot of time and energy and like mental energy for me to make my way through things and get my footing and figure out how I want to run things and meet people and so it's been a whole heck of a lot these last two weeks to be honest and so I haven't kept up with sort of the pace that I intended for filming and editing these so my bookcases are here and so they've been in boxes in the hallway this room is a mess I've done my best to keep it out of your view but this room is a mess I have boxes everywhere and my brother-in-law is coming over tomorrow to help me assemble everything so I've got to do the rest of this filming today I hope you like this outfit <laughs> We're gonna jump right into this. There's no little discussion here today. I mean, maybe in another video, maybe by the time that I'm recording video five of the day or whatever, I'll think of something I wanna to talk to you guys about. <laughs> I don't put it past myself, but today we're just gonna jump right in. First up, I have The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. I gave this four out of five stars. It is really adorable. I intended to continue on with the series, but you know how that goes, and I'm keeping this. Next is You Bring the Distant Near by Matali Perkins, and this was one of the book club picks for Booknet Fest a couple of years ago. I ended up giving this three and a half or four out of five stars. I really enjoyed all of the elements of the storytelling here and we had a great discussion about it at Booknet Fest but everything I wanted out of this was like more. More time with each characters and more just book in order to make it feel truly multi-generational which it is. So I enjoyed the pieces that were there. I just wished it was a little heftier but I am keeping this. The Veins of the Ocean by Patricia Engel. I love this book. It really hit me in the heart when I read it and I gave it five out of five stars so I'm keeping it. Shadow Shadow Shaper by Danielle Jose Older. I gave this three out of five stars. This is another one where I really enjoyed all of the pieces, but the plot came together in a way that was a little patchworky. It felt sometimes too convenient and sometimes too out of left field, but I really did like the premise and the magic and the main character, so I'm keeping this. Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I love this, and I remember when it first started being talked about on BookTube that everybody described it as like a traveling group of performers at the end of the world. That's a part of it, but this is a very multifaceted look at a plague that ends up ending the world, taking out a big chunk of the world's population and sort of the society that comes up afterwards. And you look at different perspectives at different points in time before the plague and then after the plague. And this was just absolutely, I love this so much. I understand why it would not be for some people because it is multifaceted, has the multi POVs. It is very weird at points and there's even even like a story within a story in here as well. So she does a lot, but I loved all of it. So I'm keeping this. Girl Child by Tupelo Hasman, which I read many, many years ago, and I still vividly remember like the heartache that it put me through. It's a story that's told in different little snippets. And so there are like social worker reports and arrest records and memories and things of that nature. So it's just kind of told in all of these little bits. But I really love this for for the mastery of language that it has and just the sort of play on words. I have not reread it. I always think about rereading this, but again, the like major memory that I have with this is the way that it wrecked my emotions. So it's always kind of like, do I want to reread this? But I gave it five out of five stars and I'm keeping it. Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I've already unhauled one other Rainbow Rowell book and I liked that one more than I liked this one. I think I gave it three stars when I read it, but this is one that has not sat well in my memories. One, I really didn't like the the snippets of the fan fiction in here, like actually reading them. I was not enjoying them at all. And so every time it came up, it really disturbed my reading experience. And people have asked me before about Carry On. And I don't understand why I would read an entire book of that when I didn't like it in snippets here. But also just the characters in here, I ended up not really liking. And the story in general was one that left me kind of like head scratchy. So I'm going to be unhauling this. Buried Beneath the Baobab Tree and this is by 
by Araobi Trisha Wambani. This is from that video that I did that was like a Barnes & Noble haul, but I was finding books according to certain prompts that you guys led me to, and then I never read any of the books, I don't think, because that's on brand for me. It was a fun idea. I, I had fun making the video and showing you guys the books I picked, but I still do want to read this though, so I'm going to hang on to it and keep it on my TBR. Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. We read this for an episode of Snark Squad Pod, which I will link, and I love this. I gave it four out of five stars. There were certain things that weren't as good as others, namely the second half of the book, and the love interest and his story felt a little bit unresolved, but Eliza is a character that my heart just went out to, even in all her messiness and her, her faults, and the way that she ends up treating a lot of people in this book. Like, I still really related to where she was coming from, and her need to create and exist in these online spaces is something that is obviously very relatable. So I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four out of five stars and I'm keeping it. The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This is a book that I've talked about not liking on this channel multiple times. I gave it two out of five stars and I will be unhauling it, but this I believe is a special edition of this book. So I'm kind of like, I will find out what to do with this book. It is not one I want to hang on to because I didn't enjoy it, even though it is very pretty. So I'm putting it on my unhaul pile, but no, that I know <laughs> that this is a special edition. Yes. A Fierce and Subtle Poison by Samantha Mabry. This is one of the very first books that I ever received from a publisher and then soon after that I read some own voices reviews of this that kind of turned me off of it and then I never read it so I'm going to be unhauling this. Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. I unhauled one other McLemore already but I think I'm gonna hold on to this as one that I'll read. Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver. I read this years ago and when I read it I really loved it. I think I gave it five out of five stars but it's a book that I've been hesitant to reread because I have a feeling it will not hold up so much to me now that I'm older and even further removed away from the sort of high school experience. But I am also curious because people were reading this again when the movie adaptation came out and the reaction was not as enthusiastic as like my initial reaction was. So it's one that I've held on to and that I've thought about rereading multiple times but I'm like, I don't know, do I just leave it in the past and remember it fondly? We'll see, but I am keeping it. Not a Drop to Drink by Mindy McGinnis. This is a book that was doing the rounds very early in my booktube days, and I remember Trina from Between Chapters was a very big fan of Mindy McGinnis, so I have a couple of her books, but I've never read any of them. I am still interested in doing so, and I'm still interested in this book in particular, so I'll keep it and add it to my TBR. The Accident Season by Maura Fowley Doyle. I have no idea how I came into possession of this book. I think it was the publisher, but since I can barely remember. I just, I made the mistake of looking at the back of the book and it actually sounds pretty interesting, but I feel like the reviews of this weren't great and I've never thought about this book. <laughs> And now I'm looking at it, I'm like, mm, ooh, do I want to read this? But the truth is, if I ever want to read this, I can find it in another version. Like, I don't need to hang on to it for however many more years. So I'm unhauling it. Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. I got this copy also at NerdCon Stories, I want to say. And I have read this. I gave it four or four and a half out of five stars. It is very moving and well written. Monstrous by Marcy Kate Connolly. This is a book that was probably in my first haul ever on this channel. And I don't remember why this book got put on my radar but I talked about being very excited I'm sure in that haul to read this. I've never read it. I've put it on TBRs multiple times for like readathons and things and still never read it but I'm keeping it <laughs> because I'm, I want to force myself to either like read this or get rid of it but there's still hope like and there's still interest there so I'm going to put this on my TBR. Watch Over Me by Mila Grant which was sent to me by the publisher. I think this is a romance of like a girl and her brother's friend which is always interesting to me so I'm gonna hang on to this and try to read it. Sparrow by Sarah Moon. I bought this on a trip to New York at the Strand so I'm keeping it but I am also interested in reading it. It's pretty short and I remember being really intrigued by the premise and because it is very music focused so I'm keeping this one. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green which I gave three stars. It's part of that collection that somebody gifted me so I'm keeping this one. The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. This was sent to me by the publisher and I had some interest in reading this but Mackenzie Lee has been a whole mess on social media recently. If you guys can tell it's very difficult for me in some cases to like divorce the author from their work especially because I am a mood reader 
and I'm considering books and being like, is that something that is appealing to me? So the only ties that I have to the book at that moment are the author is being a mess on social media that kind of like dampens my want to read their book. Sometimes what I know about a book is the description or just the cover or whatever. And so those things are all like part of the formula, I feel like of mood reading on top of like what I'm feeling myself, what I know about the book. And so what I know about this truly right now is just that Mackenzie Lee has been a mess on social media. So I think I'm going to end up unhauling this. Look Both Ways by Jason Reynolds. I feel like I've been holding on to this for a TBR for a readathon because it is very short and easy to get through. I have never read anything by Jason Reynolds, so I would like to correct that. I'm holding on to this one. This is an anniversary edition of The Little Prince. So it comes with a book, which you see here. I love The Little Prince. It's just really weird and magical. And this also comes with the whole like audiobook on two CDs. <laughs> <laughs> CDs. It's read by Vigo Mortensen, so that's cool. Uh, anyways, that's my anniversary edition of The Little Prince, which I'm keeping. Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. I really want to read this. I got this at a library sale for like a dollar, um, but I feel like if I'm going to read it, I can read it on ebook or audiobook or something, and if I love it, I'm definitely not going to want to keep this copy. So, you know, sorry to library sale me who got carried away with one dollar book but I'm going to get rid of this. Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown, which I read this year and loved. It's one of my favorite books that I've read so far in 2020, and I gave this five out of five stars. A Heart and a Body in the World by Deb Coletti. This was sent to me by the publisher in order to promote Deb Coletti's new book. So I have a hardcover copy of this and I really love this book. I gave it five out of five stars. And there are a lot of books that I own multiple copies of, but usually those are classics or fantasies or like favorites of all time. So I'm not like opposed to hanging on to this, but I also feel like this is a good one to hang on to because I feel like there will be a situation where I'm going to give this to someone and be like, you need to read this. So for right now, it's staying with me. How long that's true? We'll see. Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. I got this at BEA 2016 and never read it, so I'm unhauling it. Something Borrowed by Emily Griffin. I legitimately have no idea how I ended up with a copy of this book. I feel like I saw the movie when it came out in theater and I hated it. Like, like angry in the seat watching the movie. If it's the same Emily Griffin movie that I'm thinking of, but I, I would have absolutely no desire to read this book at all, so I'm unhauling it. I honestly don't know how I ended up with a copy of this book. Ooh, I think it was a book club. I think we did like a mystery wrapped exchange at a book club once and that's the book that I ended up with. So uh, yes, I am unhauling it. Children of the New World by Alexander Weinstein. This is a collection of short stories and Emily St. John Mandel blurbed it. I'm just seeing, I got this at 2016 BEA and I never read it. So I'm unhauling it. Our Own Private Universe by Robin Talley. Did I get this at 2016 BEA? It's kind of in the right time. Yeah, January 2017. I'm gonna say that I got this at 2016 BEA and I never read it, so I'm unhauling it. Blood for Blood by Ryan Groudon, which I got at 2016 BEA with the idea that I would totally read the first book in the series. And I think I might have seen Ryan Groudon speak at a different event and I was just like really into her <laughs> and the way that she expresses herself about stories and writing. So I was like, oh, what a great opportunity. I'll take this and I'll definitely read it and the first book. And then I never did. But this is one that I feel like maybe I am interested in reading. But to even get here, I have to read a whole other first book. So I feel like, yes, if and when I get to this series, I can do it through the library. I don't need to hang on to this to do so. So I'm going to unhaul it. The Widow of Rose House by Diana Biller. This is a historical romance with a sort of paranormal twist that I enjoyed a lot more than I was expecting. I gave this four out of five stars and I'm keeping it. The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly, which I read and gave four out of five stars to, so I'm keeping. The Gates by John Connolly, which I haven't read, but I bought this along with the other book, I think, on Book Outlet. And because I liked that one, I was like, ooh, this one's on sale too, but then I never read it. I think I will though. I'm going to hold on to this and put it on my TBR. Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I read this the first time and I really, really enjoyed it. Actually, I almost DNF'd it because the first half of this book I felt was so slow and just not grabbing my attention. But by the time I got into the second half of the book and I really understood everything that was happening, I was like, oh, I love this. And then I reread it because we have a podcast episode about this and I 
Mm, I did not like it as much the second time around. And more than that, the thing that sticks out to me about this reading experience is that I'm like, oh, so like V.E. Schwab doesn't know how to write women. It's like a thing for her. And this really, really highlighted that. There are still things in here that I think are done well. The found family is a big one. I really love the found family at the heart of this. And the sort of idea of like flip flopping the villain and the hero. It's one of the few times that this morally gray thing works for me and I end up rooting for <laughs> the bad guy, I guess, for all intents and purposes. So this does things very well and it gets a few things very, very wrong. I am going to hold on to this. This is also, I think, a, a newer edition or an updated edition. So yes, this is staying with me for now. Shallow Graves by Callie Wallace. I believe I received this also at a book club, just sort of as a giveaway and never read it. So I'm unhauling. Arabella of Mars by David D. Levine. I got this at BEA 2016 and David D. Levine was at an absolute delight. I thought he was a debut author. <laughs> Because when we met him, he was just so excited to be there and so excited that people were like lining up to get his book. It was one of the best author like interactions that I had that year. I did start reading this and I got you know, a good, a decent amount of the way through four or five chapters, and I just couldn't get into the story. So I ended up putting it aside. And all of these years later, I'm assuming this is a DNF. This is not what I'm going to go back to. So I'm unhauling this. The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. I read this and gave it four out of five stars, so I'm keeping it. You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. I really do not like self-help books, but one of my ex-co-workers convinced me that we should read this together because it wasn't a regular self-help book. It was a cool self-help book and I did start reading this and it annoyed the crap out of me. I just like could not do it. So I'm sorry to that co-worker, but I never finished and I am unhauling. The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis, which I believe I got at BEA 2016. And I'm going to hold on to this. I've heard really great things about this and the premise is one that still appeals to me. So I'm keeping it. Writing Tools by Roy Peter Clark. This is a reference book and one that I have read read in pieces, maybe not cover to cover, but I am keeping it. Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple. We picked this book as like a group read for the Snark Squad Discord and I started to read it and I it was immediately angry. I was so upset by how much I didn't like the narrative voice that I DNF'd it and I am unhauling this. A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole. When I first moved to Fort Lauderdale, I went on a little like tour of like the used bookstores in the area and there's this really this really cute one that is like just you know one of those ones that you walk in and you're like wow this is like a mess and it's like the the stereotype of like a dingy like dungeony used bookstore it was great this is one of the books that i ended up picking it while i was there and mostly because i feel this is a book that is like one of those like you should read it sorts of books um, hmm, am I gonna read it? Like, probably not in hard copy if I ever do, so... I wonder if I can sell it back to the used bookstore. So you want to talk about Race by Ijeo Maluo. I read this this year and give it five out of five stars, so I'm keeping. Definitions of Indefinable Things by Whitney Taylor. This is an arc that was sent to me by the publisher. I have no idea what this book is about, and I think that's a good indication that I'm probably not going to read it. North of Happy by Adi Al Said, and I have read one other of his books and I enjoyed it. I think I gave it three out of five stars, but it was a really good contemporary, road trip contemporary. So I'm not often in the mood for YA contemporary contemporaries, but if I were, I can see myself picking up another book from Al Said, so I'm going to hold on to this. Troubling Love by Elena Ferrante, and I started reading this. Oh, my Doctor Who uh, bookmark is in there, so I got a couple pages into this and never moved on, but I will read it eventually, so I'm keeping it on my TBR. P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. This is the movie tie-in that was sent to me by the publisher. I did not like To All the Boys I've Ever Loved Before, the first book in the series, and so I briefly thought about rereading it because I really enjoyed the movie. So I was like, wait, maybe I do like the story. But I think the movie is just better than the book. It's kind of what 
my brain has decided for me and I don't feel compelled to continue with the series so I will be unhauling this. Changeless by Gail Carriger and this is the second book in the Parasol Protectorate series. My first book and my second book don't match like they're not one is taller than the other and I'm not entirely sure why I would like them to match and I also want the other books in this series. I love this series and so I'm keeping it. The Deep by River Solomon and this is a book I got at 2019 BEA and I did read it. Look at me go. I also really love this. It packs a punch for a very short book and it is a very well done extended metaphor and just amazing commentary on this idea of like stories and generational trauma and the way that we carry sort of that as part of culture. So I really love this five out of five stars and I'm keeping it. The Serpent King by Jeff Setner. I don't know. I'm going to unhaul it but also if you guys know more about that book and whether or not you enjoyed it or you think I will enjoy it let me know because I I kind of wanted to put it on my TBR, but then I was like, why? You really don't remember anything about this book. Like, you guys tell me. Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. When I read this originally, I gave it three out of five stars and I tried to reread it more recently because I'd like to do like an in-depth review and continue on with the series, but I didn't get very far because I was like, damn, this is boring. So I'm gonna keep it three out of five stars for my original read. And this is a like newer updated version of the book. And I still am interested in like a far away way in rereading this and getting through the whole series. But this first book at least least is very bland fantasy of its time. There's nothing very special here if you ask me, but it's fine. I'm keeping it. The Highest Tide by Jim Lynch. I don't even remember how this got on my radar, but I read it years ago and I ended up giving it four out of five stars. And the thing that sticks with me the most out of this is just the setting. It's a coming of age book set in the Puget Sound and just a description of that place and the wildlife and the water and all of that just has stayed in my memory pretty well. So I'm keeping this. Things I Should Have Known by Claire Lesebnik. This was sent to me by the publisher and I'm going to unhaul it. And then I have updated versions of the Nancy Drew Files volume one and two and each of them have three stories in here. So I've read Secrets Can Kill, Deadly Intent, and Murder on Ice, so all of the books in volume one. And I've read Smile and Say Murder and Hit and Run Holiday. I don't think I've gotten to Whitewater Terror. Nancy Drew is one of the series that we originally started recapping over on Snark Squad back when we were recapping the books that we read as children. It's a project that we always mean to go back to to continue recapping some of these books. So I'm holding on to these and also they're just like really great updates. I appreciate them a lot so I'm keeping these. Final shelf here and we have got Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo which I read and gave three and a half or four out of five stars. I really enjoy the characters in here. The storytelling and the pacing specifically leaves a lot to be desired, but it's just very memorable for these characters. So I'm keeping this. And then I have Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, which I did the thing that I do. And because of the way that this one ends with one of my favorite characters being in danger, I looked up a spoiler just to see if they would survive in this book. And I ended up seeing more than I intended. So the answer was fine, but I also find out who does doesn't survive this book and then I was like oh and then I never wanted to read it I do like like I do want to read it I want to finish off this duology so I'm keeping both of these and we'll see when I get around to doing this I also have King of Scars by Lee Bardugo which you know I don't know. I, apparently at one point I was really invested in this idea that I was going to read all of Lee Bardugo and then I'm not saying that Ninth House <laughs> really ruined those plans for me but here we are I'm going to keep this for now because you know some some version of me really thought that this was that we were gonna do this that I was gonna do the Grishaverse thing. So I have the first three books in the Corman Strike series by Robert Galbraith. I didn't talk about my versions of Harry Potter either. I'm keeping them for now. I don't feel the need to pass them on to other people. I'm also not going to be spending more money on either of these series. So they're staying on my shelves, but that's as much as I want to say about them or promote them or anything else like that. Next are some of my favorite books in my entire collection. And you know, 
some of the most expensive books in my entire collection. But it's the Folio Society editions of the His Dark Materials series, so the Golden Compass, the Subtle Knife, and the Amber Spyglass. They are absolutely beautiful, as all Folio Society editions are. I bought these when I had a great job, but I was living with my parents, so I had no rent. And so what did I have? I had books. I had beautiful editions of books. Look at these. They're they're wonderful. They're beautiful. I love them. I love the series. And yes, I'm keeping them. The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty, which I intend to read, but it's one of those ones that you really have to like gear up for because it's a chonky one. But I have heard so many wonderful things, not only about this book, but about the series in general and how well done the entire thing is. So this is definitely staying on my TBR. All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. I've heard very interesting things about this. One of my friends, Sarah, read it and was actually like, have you read this and what did you think about it? In a way that I was like, oh, so I'm not going to like this, am I? <laughs> so I think that I'm going to unhaul it. The Accidental Highwayman by Ben Tripp. And this was a book outlet book, probably in that one and only first order that I did from book outlet. I don't even know what this is about, but the cover is really nice. I'm going to unhaul it. Behold the Dreamers by Mbolo Mbu, and I started reading this. It's one that I put aside and never got back to. I am going to hold on to it. I think I'm going to give it another try. I'm going to hold on to it. The Couple Next Door by Shari Le Pena, and I'm going to unhaul this one. American War by Omar el -Akkad, and I think I'm going to hold on to this one and keep it on my TBR. The Winter Sister by Megan Collins. It's called The Winter Sister, and the character who's murdered's name is Persephone. Persephone. <laughs> it's like a bad reason to hold on to this. Like, I don't think it is like a Hades and Persephone even retelling, but you can't name your book The Winter Sister and then call one of the characters Persephone without having some tie or commentary or something. Tell me if I'm wrong. But just reading that made me think that I'm going to keep this on my TBR. Since We Fell by Dennis Lehane, I really don't feel a pull to keep this. Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. And Jennifer Egan has written a lot of books, but A Visit from the Goon Squad by her is one of my favorite books. So uh, that's why I picked this one from Book of the Month. And I'm going to keep it because I will read it. So in total, that was 75 books. I have read and I'm keeping 32 of them. I am unhauling 24 and there are 19 to be added onto my TBR which is kind of a big number, but I'm trying to be fine with it and move on. It's fine. Starting with books that I am unhauling, I am asking again for some of your feedback. If you see any books that you think that I should read, let me know down in the comments which books those are, what I should be keeping. I have been listening to you guys and I can't wait to share which books that have flip-flopped from keep or get rid of based on your feedback in the comments. Same goes for the books that I'm putting on my TBR. Feel free to let me know which ones you think I'm definitely not going to read because <laughs> probably I won't read all of these. And that's the last of them. That's it for me today. As always, I can't wait to talk to you guys about these books down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. I went kind of old school with like my sparkly nail polish, but the motto right now in 2020 is like, why the heck not? And the truth is that the answer to why the heck not in 2020, like nine times out of 10 is because you can't. So the few times that it's like, yeah, you can do that, go for it. Like I just, I am letting myself. So it was like, why the heck not put like a thick film of glitter on my nails. Why the heck not? First up, I have The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Stewart Lee. Lee Stewart. 